What's up? Today, I'm gonna be going over why I think so many engineers are quitting their jobs. What does it mean for the engineering industry and what companies and employees can do about it? In the last few months, we've been going through what's been known as the great resignation, where Americans quitting their jobs have reached an all-time monthly high of 4.5 million in November. And it's not just affecting the lower paying jobs, it's also affecting the higher paying jobs such as engineering. And look, I'm not an expert on this topic. I just did a little bit of research online and I'm just gonna give my point of view and my experiences from a full-time licensed civil engineer in California. So why are engineers quitting their jobs? I was able to find two surveys where they asked engineers why they quit or why they intend to quit. One was from the civil structural engineering industry and the other one was from the tech industry. What I saw from both surveys is that both engineering industries were quitting for the same reason, so I'm just going to combine their top reasons for quitting right here. So the top reasons why engineers would leave their job are as follows. Low pay, lack of meaningful work, too much stress, lack of work-life balance or burnout, lack of career advancement, lack of schedule flexibility, and a toxic work environment. So what does this mean? To me, it means that a lot of people have had a lot more time to think working from home and a lot more time to reflect on what's important to them in their lives. Asking themselves questions such as, are they happy? Are they being treated well at work? Is this what they want to do for the rest of their lives? Are they finding fulfillment? And with the internet, the internet internet has become the great equalizer. Back in the day before the internet blew up, uh, companies could get away with a lot more things because no one outside the company knew. But with the internet and everyone being online, people talk. It's very easy to find out if a company culture is good or if the employees are happy. Sometimes you can just go on the internet and find reviews for companies, what it's like working for them, like on glassdoor.com. You can go on the Reddit forums to see what that's like and what it's like working for different companies. You can go on LinkedIn to find someone that actually works there or that, or that has previously worked there. It's so easy nowadays to just figure out if a company is good to work for and if they treat their employees right. And with the great resignation and everyone working from home, working from home has become a lot more acceptable. Before, you might have just been stuck in your city because that's all you could afford and you didn't have too many options in your city. But now with working from home and working from home positions available, essentially the world becomes your job search. You could technically work from anywhere. The companies that are treating their employees badly lose that leverage on them. Those employees have a lot more options on where they can go. So what can we do about it as employees and as employers? Let's just go through that list on why people quit and what we can do about it. The first reason why people quit was pay or salary. It goes to show even if you are in a high paying job, it's still not gonna be enough and you're always gonna want more money like you should be. You should know your worth and the company should know your worth. So if you're an employee, you have a couple of options. The first option is to find other work or find another job that pays you higher. That's probably the easiest way to get a pay bump. Or if you're with your current company and you wanna get paid more, you should learn to document your uh, successes and present your successes, show proof of the worth that you're bringing into the company, the money that you bring into the company and show it to your manager. So you can actually show them, maybe give them some numbers, give them some proof on why you're worth X amount of dollars. You could show them the praise that you're getting from your coworkers that like working with you, from the clients that like working with you. Things that you've done for the company that made their work more efficient, saving them money. Show it to them, document it, and present it to them so there's proof on why you should be paid that much. You can't just go in and say, hey, I've been working for this company for X amount of years, give me more money. It's not a great way to ask for a raise. And if you're an employer, you should at least try to show your employees that they're getting paid fairly. Maybe you can pull up the average pay salary for that position and show them, hey, look, we're providing you a, a pretty fair wage. Or if you're paying them above the average wage, show them, show them that, look, we're paying you this amount, it's above the average salary for someone in your position and really appreciate you and hope you stay with the company. The second reason for leaving is lack of meaningful work. For both employers and employees, they should both spend some time figuring out what the employee wants what the employee enjoys. And no, that fresh graduate that you just hired, their life goal is not to make the company the most amount of money. They went to engineering school for a different reason. Maybe that engineer has a passion for other engineering topics. Maybe they really like Excel spreadsheets, coding, programming, or computer science. Are they really into social media? Do they want to own their 
own business someday or go into management. What can you do as an employer to align the company's goals with the employee's goals. Maybe the employer could support them in taking some of the classes that they're interested in or let them get into coding. Let them make some automated program that automates all of your repetitive workflows. Let them work on different types of projects. Maybe get them involved with your company's social media or show them how the business works. Or maybe they just don't know and they need to learn different things to figure out what they like. And there's no better place to do that than with today's sponsor, Brilliant, the online interactive STEM learning platform. You know I'm a big proponent of Learn By Doing, and that's what makes Brilliant's methodology so effective. They have an ever-growing catalog of courses in math, science, and computer science that help you learn the concepts by working through them yourself in a visual, hands-on way. For example, in Brilliant's Algorithms Fundamentals course, they can help you learn how to program without having to dig through the weeds of the coding syntax through these fun interactive challenges. You just shift around these blocks of pseudocode and then you can get immediate feedback on your results. It's a good way to understand how computer algorithms work and then once you have that down, the coding syntax becomes a lot less intimidating. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash mattmccardle or click on the link in the description Below. And the first 200 people will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And for the next couple reasons, we're going to combine them since they're pretty similar. These include stress, work-life balance, and burnout. A way to handle this is to curb the culture of long work hours. To me, having a culture where employees work more than 40 hours consistently, 50, 60, 70, 80 hours on a week-to-week -week basis is unsustainable. A typical employee, if you're lucky, will probably only last about maybe three years working that much. They'll get burnt out and leave. And if they do stay any longer, I think they're just going to be bitter once they get older because they'll look back and just, man, I wasted my whole life working. And I'm not a big proponent of that. Look, in the engineering industry, it's, it's deadline based. So there's always going to be deadlines. There's always going to be weeks that you're going to have to work a little bit more but that shouldn't be the norm. And I think a lot of that is based on your company's culture. If someone's going to leave at 5 p.m., does everyone else in the office think that, why is that person leaving? It's only 5 p.m. Everyone typically leaves at 8 p.m. That guy's a slacker. When everyone's been conditioned to think like that, that becomes the company culture and what's acceptable and what's not. And I don't think that's good long-term. Sure, you can keep an employee and get a lot out of them for three years while you're working them to death, but what if you treated them better and they stick around in the company for 50 years? Imagine how much good that is. And for sure, it would decrease a lot of turnover. I'm sure that's why a lot of people would quit. And as a company, what's the cost of turnover? What's the cost of someone quitting, taking all of their knowledge, taking all of uh, their clients with them, all the recruiting costs, all of the interviewing costs, and all of the onboarding and new training and catching someone up to replace that person that just left. There's a monetary value in that loss as well. And that's for sure a tough task. If you go talk to your manager and you ask them if they can reduce hours and they don't care or there's absolutely nothing they can do about it, well, then you're kind of stuck. But hey, you could always go to another company like everyone else is doing. The next one is career advancement or lack thereof. For this, I think it's a matter of communication between the employer, making their advancement process clear, uh, what it takes to get promoted and making it fair and showing that to the employee. So if they're that type of employee that wants to get promoted, this is what they have to do. And it's on the employee to know what they want and to communicate that uh, with the company or their project manager. Do both the employer and employee know what type of employee they are? Is the employee an A player that's a go-getter that wants to get promoted, that puts in all the extra hours and and does a good job, the employer should ask themselves, how can we help this person? Who can we team them up with? Who can mentor them to make them even better, to help the company even more? They wanna do X, Y, Z. How do we get out of their way and let them do it, let them succeed? Or what if they're an employee that's more of the workhorse type? They work hard, they do a good job, they clock in, they clock out, and they get their work done, they're productive. But they wanna stay where they are. They don't really wanna take on more responsibility. They like the work that they're doing and they're fine with it. They don't need to rise up through the ranks and, and be the CEO of the company. They don't want to get into management and 
manage a bunch of people. Maybe they just like doing the technical stuff. As the employer, what do you do with them? How can you help them succeed in their goals? What makes them happy as that type of employee? Is there a career path for them? Maybe going more into the technical side. Maybe you could make a new position for them to help them succeed. And the next reason why people quit is lack of schedule flexibility. Look, I know people have different opinions on this about working from home. I personally like to work in the office, but I don't think that's right for everybody. Everyone's different. But what you can be sure of is that working from home has become a lot more acceptable, especially if you've proven yourself that you're a good worker and communicator that's efficient working from home. And for some engineers, this is very important for them. So if you're an employer that absolutely does not want anybody working from home and that's your rigid policy, I mean, that's fine, but you can be sure there's gonna be other competitive firms that will offer those options. And you may or may not lose some potential employees to them. And the last reason engineers quit is a toxic work environment. You got a bad boss, you got a bad manager, you got bad employees, everyone's putting you down, no one is lifting you up, you hate your work, what do you do? You could learn to cope, but honestly, I would just run. There's plenty of other firms out there that aren't going to treat you like trash. Life is too short. The world is too big to be stuck in one place and be voluntarily miserable. There are plenty of people and hopefully companies out there that will treat you with respect and that will treat you like a human being. Thanks for watching and for making it this far. If you want to know how I personally dealt with these career decisions in my career. I've been with the same company for six plus years and I've asked myself all of these questions and more. Check out this video here and in the description below where I share the criteria I use when looking for companies. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.